Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Diatone Rabbit 239NX. Actually, I don't think it's going to be called that. I think they're going to call it the GTR 239. This is going to be replacing the GTR 90 series, I believe. And as you can see, it says test at the top there. I have had this for some time. Apologies to Diatone. It is Christmas. There's just so much stuff coming my way. So it does have some specs on here, though. So you can see it comes with a Runcam Swift Micro and it comes with the Runcam TX200U. That is the one that switches. So it's using the Tramp protocol there and it says motor Mamba 1105. 5500 kV and then the ESC it's the Mamba 4 and one stack so the F405 and the 25 amp ESCs it's 25 amp peak 20 amp continuous it says 3S and more on that later the prop it says 2 inch although it's come with a 1.9 inch prop and again more on that later its wheelbase is 90 millimeters and it says it's 72 grams. It's not, it's 85 grams. But look at this, this is interesting, isn't it? Can you see they have got different versions? Runcam TX200 UVTX, but then Unify Pro version. And look at this Runcam Split Mini 2 version. Although I believe that one is still in testing. This is an unboxing. I don't usually do unboxings, but let's take a look. We got some Diatone stickers if you love that kind of stuff. So these are the Gem Fan 1940 pitch propellers. And I never get on well with these propellers. Any copter that I put them on, I can never quite get it dialed in. And you're probably thinking, well, if this can take a 2-inch propeller, why are they providing a 1.9-inch propeller? And I have the answer. So let's get this out of the box. It comes attached with cable ties. The problem is this wire here. So I always wondered why Diatone used this connector here with this wire and the answer is it actually fits the RXSR perfectly it doesn't have the telemetry wire so you have to hook that up to the TX6 and I will put a diagram to show you where the TX6 is. I'm not going to be using a RXSR I'm just going to use a D8 receiver and the problem is, when you put a 2-inch propeller on here, if I can get it on, it comes very close to this wire, and in a crash, it can chop it off. So that's why they have gone for the 1.9-inch prop. And also, as you can see, this is the prop guard version, which is the entire frame, by the way. They do have a version coming out that doesn't have the prop guards and I think they also have a 2.5 version and a 3 inch version coming out as well. It's attached to this box here by the cable ties. In fact, let me just get rid of that. So I guess another reason for going with the smaller propeller is that this flexes quite a lot here and as I mentioned it's the entire frame but I imagine it's quite easy to replace if it breaks and I think the frame's very cheap as well but it's an interesting choice isn't it going for the entire frame you know because these will break I mean they they are really stiff but you know if you have a heavy crash then they'll break and you'll have to replace the entire frame so the motors are now a Mamba brand. They are actually made by 3B and as it said on the box they are 5500 kV and they will take a 4S but when I asked Diatone why they wrote 3S on the box they said that the frame doesn't suit a 4S battery. I don't think that's true and uh, you know 
when I reviewed the GTR 90, I came to the conclusion that 4S on these tiny propellers, it didn't make much of a difference. It just made more noise. So, yeah, 3S, probably the maximum you'd want to go with this one. But I believe they are saying 4S with the one without the prop guards. So you can see we've got this Mini Mamba stack and unlike the larger version it is covered in capacitors and despite that they still have got the 47 micro farad low ESR capacitor on the 5 volt rail and that is going to be for the camera and also the Runcam TX200U. Now this comes locked out of the box so it's stuck at 25 milliwatts no matter what channel you are on so you have to press this button i think for about 10 seconds and then that unlocks it and it can go up to 200 milliwatt now diatone what are you playing at with this antenna we learned a long time ago about five years ago from the Hubson days, that if you have your antenna horizontal, then you get terrible range compared to when it is vertical. In fact, the Hubson H107D, I think it had like a 10 milliwatt VTX or something like that. You could double the range from having it vertical. I know why they've done it, is so that, you know, it doesn't break in a crash, but I would like to have seen a cable tie and this going vertical. And, well, on the subject of that, if you are taking this thing apart and forget that this is cable tied to the top, so we've got these two screws here, if you lift that up, it is going to rip off the micro UFL connector there on the VTX, and those damage really easily, I think, they say it's something like five goes you get at getting one of those on and then they are toast. So I would like to see a better option for that. As you can see, we've got this plate on the top here and that is going to be for the Unify version. That's going to sit on there, I imagine. We've got a strap on the underneath there. Let's take a look what else we have got in the package. There's a buzzer and I've just noticed actually as well. I tend to not use buzzers these days because we've got D-Shock commands but we've got one of these little JST connectors there and they have provided a buzzer so if you want to use a buzzer then that's fine. We have got some cable ties it looks like we have got a load of spare screws here and they have got thread lock on them as well and then we've got some extra screws here and those are going to be for the propellers. What have we got here? This is silicon mats for the underneath so that your battery doesn't slip there and then we've got the buzzer board and we have got a XT30 it's the opposite of that so I imagine that is for hooking up to your charger and then it looks like we have got a spare connector as well for the ESC and the flight controller bridge so lastly we have got an XT30 connector on the back. It's come flash with Betafly version 3.51. It doesn't seem to have much setup on there. However, you know, I received these as test models and the expectation is for me to go in and, you know, improve the setup, improve the PIDs. The PIDs that they have given look pretty high maintenance to me, so I am going to have to check that out. Air mode wasn't turned on. This thing does have a current meter, though, so, you know, we can figure out what is the best battery to use but I only have these 550 milliamp 3S batteries so that's probably going to be sufficient. You can change the camera angle here and we have got camera protection at the front as well so let's get and see how this thing performs. Okay let's do a line of sight flight with this chap. Get it out of the grass quickly. 
So it's quite a noisy one, this guy. I've got it in angle mode just for now. I had to change the digital idle to 6%. It was set to 3. Definitely going to see a flip of death if you keep it like that. So let's go for a punch. And that is your lot. So, you know, I would say power for an intermediate. And that's about it, really. Now, these are the stock pids that the guys gave me but as we all know it's impossible to tell how it will perform FPV sometimes line of sight you can say man these pids are absolutely superb and then you fly them FPV and it's all over the place but for now at least it's behaving on these stock pids but we're not having much forward motion you see so another punch again just to show the power yeah it's not a big power machine this but you know maybe good for the beginner especially with the ducts as well and you can do acro too not hearing any vibrations or anything like that through the frame which is good and let's stick it back into angle mode just to see if we have got any drift and it's just drifting with the wind i think so if i let go of the sticks drifts that way but then turn it around it still drifts that way with the wind so that's always good to check to make sure that we're not getting noise through to the copter I always like to do that on my test, but uh, as for noise and sound, pretty loud this one. <laughs> but anyways, it's getting dark, so uh, let's get and do some FPV with this fella. So, you know, a few moments ago when I was saying you can't really tell how a tune is going to behave until you do FPV. Well, the stock tune that they had put on this was completely unflyable FPV. Now, I think the reason why I have found that against other reviewers is that it's very windy at the moment. Someone mentioned in the comment, it's always windy in Andy RC's video. Can you see it pitching back there? It's doing that on its own and again there. And I think the other reviewers that tried this had calm weather, but what diatone have been focusing on with this copter is how robust it is so we've got these protectors here and if you watched nick burns review of it he smashed it into a bunch of hard objects and it didn't break and they've been focusing on that but there is a downside to that because of course in order for it to be strong the material needs to be thicker heavier and that's going to affect the flight characteristics so I think they were flying it in calm weather and got decent results out of it. What I needed to do was to really up the P gains to stop it doing that and then I was able to get it to fly pretty nicely. But this pitching back movement here, yeah, it was not enjoyable to fly at all and I'll show you the PIDs in a moment that I used to get it to fly nicely. Now the current meter doesn't seem to work so you will probably notice in everyone else's reviews that they have removed it. I did the calibration that I showed in my cheap 5 inch build and each time I did the calibration it produced a different figure so the current meter not working on this stack compared to the full size version just look at that pitching back movement there yeah but yeah can you see we have got the milliamp draw flashing there at 500 but we've got 10.8 volts one good thing about this copter is the flight time is pretty decent because it doesn't draw that many amps actually but uh yeah i'm just 
having no fun with this at all so I'm going to come in for a landing and I'll show you the PIDs that I used. So you will see that they are pretty extreme. We have got a P gain of 69 on the roll and the I gains needed up in as well. They were like 20. So yeah, I've upped those as well. And then if we look at the pitch, we've got 92. It really did need that to combat the wind. But when I used those figures, I was not able to trick it out or at least, you know, it flew much better and it was very hard to trick out. In fact, I think the only reason it tricked out once was because it doesn't have as much power as the rest of the copters out there. And when I'm talking about the rest of the copters, you know, we've got a lot of copters in this market at the moment. We've got the Mobula 7, we've got the beta FPV stuff, you know, and I hear people complaining that those models are breaking, but they don't have the protectors as strong, so I think there is less drag with those and that's why they fly better and this one, yeah, it is really strong and it's going to be great for beginners. So if you are a beginner and you crash a lot and are fed up of these protectors breaking all of the time, then I can recommend this model. And as you can see now, it's not doing any of the pitching back movements. I'm putting it into dives and it is behaving nicely. So yeah, but it was a windy day, so I don't know how these PIDs are going to work on a non-windy day. Maybe you can have two profiles, one for a calm day and one for a not so calm day. But the other copters were all done in conditions like this in 15 mile per hour plus winds and they didn't have those problems. So I think it's gonna be tough competition. But yeah, when it comes to robustness, this one has got to be the winner. And we've got super clean video, as you can see as well. There's no noise whatsoever. Yeah, but I would take that current meter off because it's not doing anything. You can see there, I even managed a inverted your spin, but that's where it managed to trick out, I think. Just because of the lack of power, though, rather than the PIDs. So there you go. Yeah, would I recommend this copter? I think for a beginner, but when it comes to things like doing acro and flying in the wind, it's going to be more high maintenance than something like the Mobula 7. So yeah, you've got to take that into consideration. And for me personally, I'm more looking forward to the versions that are coming out that don't have the protectors and the 2.5 inch version and those ones there. But yeah, as you can see, pretty decent flight time there. We are over three minutes and this is on the 25 milliwatt mode as well. So, you know, pretty decent range and, you know, we know the run cam stuff to be very good as well. But yeah, that is my review of the GTR 239 with the protectors. Yeah, a bit of a strange one for me because I really like Diatone, but for me, I wasn't too fond of it. I can recommend it, it's just you have to play around with it and I will leave it there. So, as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.